Hi, once again. Welcome to episode 797. And the topic today is going to be all about boundaries. Basically, are your boundaries healthy? Are they soft or firm? Which sounds a bit weird, but I'll explain what that is in a moment. And do you even know? Um, I'll give you some clues as well, by the way, and some solutions. So don't despair. I've got some more content to give you. Before I jump into the topic at hand, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day and what this is about. So first of all, say hi. My name First of all, first of all hi, my, my name is Barry Selby. Um, you've probably figured that out from looking around the broadcast. Um, hi, Dea, nice to see my broadcast. Hi, Nicole. Uh, excuse me, Luke, Lucia. I'm getting the names messed, messed up in my head. Um, welcome to my broadcast. This is a Facebook Live, by the way, in case you're watching somewhere else later on. I am, yes, I got my name. <laughs> I'm a best, I'm the, in, <clears throat> I've tried it in English. Okay, let me start again. I'm jumping and saying thanks and having introduced myself properly. So yes, again, hi, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't figured that out already. <laughs> I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, about men and, for men and women, about relationships, there'll be a, a better ones, kind of obvious. I'm also an inspirational speaker. Occasionally, I can actually articulate clearly and speak well, too. One of those days today. And I'm also a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work and why I'm so inspired to serve women and help women have what they want. Hi, Julie, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, and it's also inspired these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 797. Countdown continues. Three more to get to number 800. Ooh, ooh. I have no idea what that's going to be like, but we'll see when I get there. So yes, I've done a lot of these talks, and it's been a wide range of topics over the last two plus years, and most of them are around relationship-centric conversations, some about love, and a lot of it about self-support. And this one covers basically at least two of those three, if not all three of those aspects, which is about boundaries. It's gonna sound mundane, but I want to, I'm hopefully gonna have some downloads as I talk that will be informative, inspirational, and entertaining so that you actually enjoy this conversation, because I like to enjoy it myself and give you some pointers about how to be in a better place with yourself and every relationship around you because, to be put it simply, boundaries are one of the biggest um, opportunities to improve your relationships all the way around. I know I'm gonna talk about codependency because that comes up a lot recently because if you don't have good boundaries, you're gonna be walking into that trap and I'll explain that in a moment too. But also it's about how to have respect for yourself and be respected by other people in your interactions, which is a good thing to have, whether it's dating or business or any other area of your life. So this is useful stuff, so stay tuned. So first of all, what are boundaries? And obviously, perhaps, they're an indication of a border or a delineation or a definition of difference between you and somebody else. Imagine basically boundaries around a country or a city or around a house that fence or that wall or that um, line on a map <laughs> is a definition or indication of separation or distinction between one place and another. Personal boundaries are the same thing because for many people, well, we'll see, I don't know, I don't exactly know how many people, but quite a lot of people, there's a definite lack of definition between who they are and somebody else, especially in relationships. There's a, I'm, I'm looking for this, I'm, hang on a second as I'm, I'm downloading as I'm saying this, but there's, there's a quote or there's a framing about how when you're in a relationship sometimes you don't know where you finish and where the other person begins. That's an indication of a lack of boundaries. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have that um, merging of, of souls, so to speak, and certainly the heights of sex and passion and, and, and lovemaking, that unity is wonderful, that unification, that, that sense of being one is an incredible experience. But I'm talking about just in individua individuation and individuality, those are different words, yes. Having boundaries is a way of actually helping yourself be healthier because the thing about it is that having no boundaries is actually detrimental to your health, which is why I think I said, I think I said healthy boundaries in the title because it literally ties to your health. If you don't have healthy boundaries, you're gonna find yourself getting drained, getting overrun, getting latched onto by the people a lot more than you probably want. So if you're having that experience, this is a clue about why it's happening. Ooh, now nah, she, 
<laughs> Sorry, I, I just had a thought about how to use an analogy about boundaries and borders, and I thought, no, that, that's going to start getting political. I don't want to get into that conversation. So let me stick to the boundaries. Much easier. So <laughs> some of this can correlate to country borders too, especially this country, but I'm not going to go there in this talk. But if you want to take the permutation of what I'm talking about to that level, feel free to do so. <sighs> that could get messy really quick. So sticking back to the personal boundaries, individual boundaries, and in relationship too. And actually, to have a PS to that one, there's also boundaries that your relationship can have around it as well to keep you two in a much more unified space. So that can come into that play a little bit later on. But let me start with you as an individual being, because that's much easier. Because most of us, <laughs> most of us are individuals. <laughs> I would say all of us are individuals, to be honest. So, as an individual person, having healthy boundaries has more than one component to it. One of those thing, one of those components is knowing basically your, um, I don't say personal space, but your beingness, because you'll know where your where your. Um, actually, sorry, I've got competing thoughts coming up. So let me start with one. So one of the things about boundaries is when you know your boundaries are clear, people don't get to invade them that easily. So you have some clear delineations where somebody comes to your personal space or comes at you wanting something you don't want to give, you can say no very easily. The second part of that boundaries is when people are draining your energy. Because the thing is, in certain toxic relationships, particularly those with narcissistic tendencies, it's easy to get drained, unfortunately, if you're the person who's being um, latched onto. I talk about energy. I talk about how narcissism is something like energy, energy vampires. If your boundaries are clear and they're strong, that doesn't happen to you. So that's one of the benefits of having healthy boundaries is that your relationships with anybody, not just romantic relationships, will be healthier because people can't drain you or suck your energy out, so to speak. A part of boundaries too is to really start taking care of yourself because part of what boundaries are about is to keep your agreements with everybody else clear. I did a whole talk about agreements about a month or two ago and it's important to know that when you keep your agreements with yourself and other people that improves your boundaries because you can trust yourself. The boundary you create for yourself is based largely in trusting yourself and having cleaner um, energetic communication with everybody else. So, so trust, um, agreements, um, self-esteem, all these components are part of what create healthy boundaries around you. The challenge some people have, and you may not be like this person, but some people do this, when they get into a relationship, they throw the boundaries out the window <laughs> because they're desperate for intimacy and closeness and they think that by removing their boundaries, it'll be easier. Not so much. Because if you abandon your boundaries, so to speak, and you dive into a relationship, you have no sense of individuality in a relationship. And a healthy relationship is where two individuals dance together, but they don't give up each other, give up their own autonomy. A healthy relationship is made up with two individuals who, and, and I'm speaking about monogamy here, because some people I know are talking about polyamory, that's not my conversation here. But in monogamous relationships, there are two individuals gay or straight doesn't make a difference in this context they come together and choose to be together in a relationship but they dance together as individual beings in fact if you watch two dancers work together they may dance as a unit but they're both individuals very clearly in that dance they do together and a relationship is the same thing so you have healthy boundaries in your relationships means that you can have a much healthier relationship because of that so healthy boundaries create healthy relationships including primary relationships so it's vital to do that so let me go back a bit to what's talking about the different things that make boundaries work. Having self-support, self-confidence, self-trust, and keeping agreements, you have self-respect, are all components of having those healthy boundaries. It also reminds you that you can support yourself individually. You don't need another person. The thing about it some people fall into with relationships, again, the codependency thing I mentioned at the beginning, is this thing that they need somebody else to feel whole. This is the... Um, simplest definition of codependency it's also the indication where the boundaries are weak or gone basically because your your ability to have healthy boundaries is what creates your sanctity and sanctuary in the world I'm giving you little seeds by the way about what boundaries are about so you can understand what they, where they work for you and how they how they work for you because the thing is if you don't have this in your life working you can be very one of the one of the let me say that, the symptoms that's a good word the symptoms of, of unhealthy boundaries or lack of boundaries 
is feeling drained all the time, feeling used up by other people, feeling at the mercy of other people, feeling basically codependent with them, where they can take from you all the time and you get nothing back. These are all symptoms of weak or inhibit or um, not inhibit, not invisible, um, ineffective boundaries. Having healthy boundaries is part of being a successful human being in life, I believe. So if you're having challenges with that, I have some things, I'll put, I'll put, I will put some links in the comments at the back end that will invite you to check out because they will help you if you're looking at how to build up your boundaries. But what I've been saying is clear. If you start to learn how to keep your agreements with yourself and other people, as I mentioned, again, I did talk a couple of months ago about this, it will transform your sense of relationship with everybody else and will give you back boundaries that you maybe you've forgotten how to do. So agreement keeping, agreement keeping is a fundamental component of having healthy boundaries. Because when you have, a, when you have um, healthy agreements with yourself and other people, what starts to happen is you have a structure, you have solidity, you have, fir you have um, what's another word I want to use? You have an establishment of your beingness that is, authority, is your own authority. And when you have that place of authority in yourself, it gives you a sense of structure in your life, which is your boundaries. So having that place of trust, having that place of understanding, having that place of acceptance of yourself are cornerstones to having healthy boundaries. As I mentioned, with self-confidence, self-trust, self-support, really different pieces, these are all different tools and components that make up being healthy in your life to support yourself and, again, having healthy boundaries is part of that. Or in fact, it's kind of they work together. So when you have this, they, then they come together too. So your boundaries can be much healthier. And this is the thing that makes it easier is that you can do this all yourself. Boundaries are not created by your relationship partners. Boundaries are not created by your parents. The boundaries are created by yourself. Now you can have additive help by the people who guide you. I mean, I help my clients do that. So yes, other people can help you with that. But the reality is your boundaries are your own. It's not somebody else's job to make them for you. It's your job to own them for yourself. And if, it need, if you need to get the help to establish those healthy boundaries, then, then that's something you need to do for yourself to get the help from somebody else. It's not going to be something where you wait for somebody else to show up and do it for you. It doesn't work that way, especially your relationship partner. It's, it's, okay, so just, just to explain what's going on, I am I keep getting downloads of bits and pieces of this conversation, but they're not coming through necessarily as clear as I'd like, so it's not contiguous. So I stop and start, I apologize, but that's just what's coming through. So um, bear with me. And that's actually part of, oh, okay. <laughs> that's part of boundaries, by the way, is being clear with other people, letting people know where you are, how you feel, what's going on. Because it gives people a sense of what you're about. When you're, stuffing things down, hiding out from the world, then it's not necessarily boundaries, it's basically avoidance, and you're not necessarily having people see you or know who you are. Part of having healthy boundaries is that people get to see you as you really are, because you have a clarity of understanding and a definition of who you are, what you're about. And when you have healthy boundaries, not just, not just solid walls of boundaries, because that's not healthy either. When you, have, when you have healthy boundaries, you can be very approachable but people can't dominate you. People can't run over you. People can't drain you or take from you because you're owning your own space and you have authority and autonomy that gives you the sense of beingness that gives you individuality and individuation, as I mentioned. So healthy boundaries are vital if you want to, th if you want to succeed in living on this planet and also if you want to succeed in relationships, business, every area because the healthy boundaries you create, the healthy boundaries you reinforce, the healthy boundaries that you establish whichever way you come at it, give you the freedom to be more effective in the world. And as I mentioned before, it lets you avoid the trap of codependency because that's where the failure boundaries really express itself. I'm getting lots of pieces, I'm just seeing if there's anything that ties it all together. Let me think, let me think. So boundaries for me are a quality of self-support that are, there are which, which, which way I'm gonna put this? <laughs> They're often ignored, but are vital for life. That's a good way of putting it. 
So as I mentioned, I'm gonna put some links in the comments because some of this stuff is so is spoken to by those tools. But I want to make sure you get this key that about self those, those those healthy boundaries with yourself is a reflection of your relationship with yourself. And when you are honoring and respecting and appreciating who you are, then those boundaries are clear and other people get to see that and respect that. See that the other side effect of healthy boundaries are people start to respect you more because you, you they know who you are and what you're about and what you're a yes for and what you're a no for. In a sense, it's almost like they know what you're about. Not everything, they still, you still get to keep some secrets, but they know in a lot of ways, like I mentioned, like you're, you're a yes or a no. It's like they know what you, you stand for and what you don't stand for. These things are part of the your makeup, so to speak, of how to be an authentic, whole, healthy and respectful and respectable person in the world. It all, com and it all comes down to boundaries. Well, it doesn't all come down to boundaries, but it's a large piece of the puzzle. And when you figure this out, you understand this and you start creating healthy boundaries for yourself, if you haven't been doing so already, it creates a whole new reputation for you in the world that is automatic, that is authentic and that is aligned to who you are. So if you haven't figured that out yet, I'm here to help. <laughs> so the links I mentioned, I'm gonna put in the comments. Um, there's four of them. I said as well, I was gonna put in there. So first of all, I will put in the, in the comments a link to um, my newest group program called Coming Home to Yourself because this is what boundaries are about, is when you start to come home to yourself and live in who you are and you own your beingness and you own your, your self-responsibility then boundaries become clean, become healthy, and become automatic. So that's going to be in the comments, first of all. It's a group course. It's a pay what you want because it's a beta test. So definitely check that out. Secondly, because part of that boundary establishment is turning, is turning inward on yourself to really own your own space and to appreciate who you are, a little bit of self-love goes a long way. So there'll be a link in the comments for my self-love practice as well. And because this can be deeper than some people are willing to work through with, automatic, with these other processes, Kind of makes sense. Let me try that again. <laughs> this is obviously not scripted. Um, if you're stuck and you want to get some help, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. That's for the ladies, by the way. If you're a man, you can reach out to me out through social media and you want help. But I'll put the link in the comments for a um, complimentary clarity conversation to get you guidance, to get you clear where you want to go. And then that's the third. The fourth thing, course, is my book. Because I mentioned the book at the beginning and some of you have been wanting to get the book, so I'll put the link in the comments for my best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, because if you haven't already got a copy, get a copy. So um, with that, I think I've given you enough to think about. If you have any questions about this, please put them below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. If you want to reach out to me directly, again, I'll put the link in the comments, or you can reach out to me over, reach out to me, reach out to me over social media. Got the right teeth in for that one. And uh, I invite you to consider for yourself, are your boundaries healthy? Are they hard, are they soft, do they work for you? Do you know how to change that? Hopefully this talk you've been listening to is giving you some insights, some inspiration and some guidance because that will change your life. So with that, I thank you for watching as always. This is my daily talk, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you. This is my daily talk I do every day, by the way. Facebook, Facebook Live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Join me anytime, any day, you can catch me live on the replay. The replay speaking in a witch, Go to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. You can like my page and watch the broadcast there. Alternatively, you can watch them on YouTube. In fact, you might be watching it there now. On YouTube, you can find my, um, my channel is Barry Selby. Please like my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the, excuse me, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, not same as, not same as you at Facebook. And on my channel, there's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, which you can, subscribe, you can watch there. Subscribe to my channel, watch the playlist right way around. Um, it's easy to search there because the titles are closer together so you can see all the titles I've got, all 797 plus this one. Um, each one is there to help you. Just scan through the titles, find the one you want to watch and uh, watch away. These talks are in in intended to help you take better care of yourself because that's my encouragement, that's my invitation, that's my recommendation every single time. And every talk is here to contribute to your life ideally and make your life more enjoyable. So my invitation, my recommendation, my suggestion to you is to please take care of yourself. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.